स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः friends welcome back to the study of the bhagavad gita and having completed the detailed study of the seventh chapter i took the liberty of repeating in the previous six chapters without your consent i know you are eager to complete the study of the gita but i have a sense of duty that sense of duty is that i would not like you to read it as a fiction or as a poem or a literature the gita has a special effect on human life provided that human being wants to benefit himself or herself from the ideas emanating from these infinite number of words consisting of 700 and odd verses and each word explores into a meaning and when you link those words together into a sentence grammatically correct it explores into an idea and that idea in the first stage is a new information for you the world all the universities and etc what is known as tertiary education do not have the capacity to inform you and teach you and educate you on this subject what is the subject matter of this subject the subject matter is that this human personality with all its frail frailties and follies all its faults and foibles this human personality can manifest into a divine the gita is the best form of educative literature informative educative instructive and ultimately doesn't keep you in a question doesn't keep you hanging in suspense it is descriptive what is the description what will happen to you when you reach that goal so dears my intention is my desire is my sense of duty is to pass on to you as much as possible those ideas which swami vivekananda termed as swami vivekananda ji as termed as man making character building education which helps a human to transform the frail human personality into a divine the purpose of study is to manifest the potential divinity already within us for ordinary people like us to think we are the divine is a sacrilege is a sin so we have to come out of this misconception this misunderstanding so frequent exposure to these ideas frequent exposure means repetitive exposure to these ideas helps us to manifest the potential divinity that is already within us that is dears how i would like to defend myself whether i need any defense or not 
but I will like to defend myself from the allegation that I'm extremely repetitive and I don't count my shlokas and end the study of the Gita as quickly as possible. That is not my game plan. The game plan is we will get ourselves exposed to the information, shravana, listening carefully, and cogitating on that listening, that is a manana, inner cogitation, we slowly and slowly expose ourselves to these information and we educate ourselves. And the process of education is rational conviction and performance of our corrected behavior pattern. How do we live our life so that our physical livelihood, our life pattern, our day-to-day -day flow of life is in tune with that education to which I am exposing myself today. And then the instructive part comes in. Do's and don'ts. Avoid and accept. Keep away from it and invite and embrace these. Away from these ideas, invite and welcome and assimilate these ideas. This is the instructive part of it. And finally, the Gita will teach you, even at the end of the second chapter, what is the description of a person who has achieved that goal. Sita Pragya Lakshana, the signs and symptoms of a realized soul. Anyway, dears, we have studied up to the 39th shloka. This 39th shloka is a watershed, just like the summit of a mountain when rain falls, it falls down the, rest, the left slope, it goes down the right slope. This shloka is like a watershed of a mountain. Why? Let us read it and you'll find Sri Krishna saying the same thing. Esham te abhita shankhe buddhir yoge tu imam shrinu buddhya yukta yaya parta shloka vandham prahasyasi shloka number 39. I have up till now spoken to you about the soul, the spirit, the holy ghost, the sunyam, the alak niranyam, the tau, call it by any name, the absolute immutable reality. Each philosophy each sect of religion has named it according to their conventions. But <laughs> call it by any name, the rose is a rose. There's an English proverb, call the rose by any name, it remains a rose. The Atman, the Brahman, is from the Hindu concept. Sunyam is from the Buddhist concept. The Holy Host and the Spirit is the Christian concept. Allah Khuda is the Islamic concept. Torah is a Jewish concept. Tao is a Chinese concept. Alak Niranjan is the Sikh concept and Jina is a Jaina concept. The concepts are different, but the object is the same. Sankhe here means what the Upanishads describe as Purusha. That concept of Purusha can be analyzed with a hair splitting logical analysis 
यु संख्यते अनेन इति संख्य आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल इट विल बी वेरी क्लियर टू यू आई एम अवेयर आई एम यू आर ऑल अवेयर यू आर ईच वन ऑफ यू यू से आई एम I put a question to you. Please kindly analyze and let me know who is this am? Who is this first person singular number of English grammar that capital I? Who is it? Come back to me with an answer. Someone will say well i am this body mind complex and i would say are you sure if you are the body mind complex why do you say my body my mind it is spontaneous my body my mind so i put you a thinking i have found out a fault in your argumentation so yes i should say i body but i don't say i body my inner feeling is my inner perception is it's my body my mind my intellect my life force my energy my ego they are all mine so how do i tell swami i'm this body so you go back you keep on thinking analytically till you come and tell me swami i experience i am i am aware i exist but swami i can't display it to you i can't prove it to you it is so samvid chaitanya it is self evident to me I am aware I am but I can't place it on a platter and hand it over to you Sankhyate by deep analytical approach I now know my true original nature is that again call it by any name the spirit the holy host the tora the atman the brahman the sunyam the jina the alak niranjan allah khuda any name call rose by any name it does not loses its fragrance the fragrance is always there sankha here says in the gita he says i have esha in the previous shlokas in this manner te avita i have specifically described to you what is sankhya buddhi that ultimate which you analyze which you reach by hair splitting analysis logically i the eternal soul which cannot be killed Arjuna, you are afraid of killing. It is beyond your capacity to kill, and you keep on lamenting about it. As far as body is concerned, it came into being without your involvement. It is existing in th- without you and your involvement. It will die one day without your involvement. To complete the call of duty. if you have to destroy that body i will teach you the art of performing your duty in such a manner naivam papam avapsasi you will not be tainted by vice killing is a vice i'll teach you a technique i will teach you a procedure i will teach you a methodology by performing which in that particular attitude in a manner with that particular attitude 
you will have to undergo a sea change known as attitudinal correction. Correction of your attitude. I will teach you that. So, that part of education is yoga buddhi. And this part of education which I've already imparted is sankha buddhi. The abstract, intellectual, rational conviction of the existence of the immutable, eternal, infinite, absolute self. Shankha buddhi vishaya, opera vidya vishaya, the subject matter of this study, te avita, I have told you. Buddhir yoga to imam shrino, Sankha buddhi and yoga buddhi. Buddhi shavda here is Madhya Dipikanya. Put a hole in this wall, put a lamp there, it will illuminate this room, it will illuminate that room. One lamp performs a duty of illuminating two rooms. The word buddhi here is illuminating two concepts. Buddhi is understanding. Rational conviction and understanding is buddhi. Sankhe buddhi, I have told you. Now, yoga buddhi to imam shrino. Now, with all attention, you listen to me carefully. Why should I? What do I stand to gain? I am a motivated human being. I do not bulge an inch. I don't move a millimeter without knowing what is the motivation and what is the profit. I am as realistic, as practical as that. You have to induce me. You have to motivate me, motivate me to let me know this is the benefit that is waiting for you. Won't you go? That's the gain that is waiting for you. So in the second line of the shloka, Sri Krishna defines what is waiting for you round the corner if you follow now buddhi yoga or yoga buddhi. Sankha buddhi, you have now understood yoga buddhi. And as I am revising, I will skip, but I will not skip on or compromise on the basic fundamental ideas which builds up our character. The character which will lead to divinizing ourselves. So, Sri Krishna says in the first shloka of the 30, first line of the 39th shloka, Esha te avita sankhya buddhi. Yoga buddhi tu imam shrino. Now, divert your attention from that and pay new attention to the ideas that I am going to expound to you now. That is, the ideas that I am going to propound to you hereafter. What are these ideas? Jaya Buddha, holding on to that intellectual conviction, holding on to those new attitudes which I am going to describe. Jaya Buddha, Buddha Jukta Jaya Partha, I'm sorry, Jaya Buddha Jukta, holding on to which those new ideas which I am going to propound now, Karma Bandham Prahasasi, the sin that accrues to you in doing something which is not righteous, which leads you to perpetrating of a sin, you will perform those duties 
but sin will not assail you. This is the trick of the trade. And he will tell you later on, Yogaha Karmasu Kaushalam. Yoga, Buddha Yoga, Karma Yoga, commonly known as Karma Yoga. What is Karma Yoga? I will teach you a technique, I will teach you a procedure, I will teach you a methodology, holding on to it, following it verbatim, without any deviation with your own brain wave. Follow me totally, thoroughly, correctly, perfectly. If you follow, na eva papam avapsasi, no sin will ever be able to touch you. He is using the word sin. You must know if you detach from one, punna is also detached. You will go beyond the concept of hold of sin and virtue. Pap and punya both will dissolve. Thereby, you are on your journey to establish yourself in the magnificence, excellence, the sublimity of your own true nature, the soul. Atmanishta, you will be poised in the edge excellence, majesty, sublimity of your own true original nature. That is what I am going to teach you now. So the second chapter, dear, teach you about the absolute concept of the Atman and Brahman. They are the same. When it is limited by jiva, it is jiva atman. When that limitation falls off, it is paramatman, sublime self, the Brahman. Brahman comes from the root bring, brihat, immeasurably extensive, where space does not have any hold, time does not have any hold. It is changeless, immutable, it is absolute. I have explained to you, and you must prepare your intelligence to have a vague idea of that. As of now, because you are totally saturated by these four concepts of name, form, quality, utilitarian value, and your limited ego, I. You are so saturated with these five, with the best of your efforts, there is no space to realize your true original nature now. I will teach you how to create a space in you. In your personality, I will teach you a methodology that I'll give you an example, then I'll explain in words. Say, for instance, you have a huge tank. There's an outlet, there's an inlet. The outlet has a maximum exhaust level. You turn the ball, ball switch, ball cock, I turn the tap and make it totally open, maximum exit. And you open the inlet pipe. You balance in such a manner, it does not overflow. You are replenishing the same quantity of water that is going out. So what is happening? The water level tends to lower down because it is going out. And the inlet level, you adjust it in such a manner, it fills it up without overflowing. 
am I clearly understood? Your flow of life is that tank. Your life is that tank. There is an exhaust pipe and an outlet pipe and an inlet pipe. I'm explain to you, explaining to you the word karma yoga. You open up the exhaust pipe. What is that? Let Papa and Punda both flow out. How will it flow out? I do not want Papa. I do not want Buddha. How is it possible? I am motivated by a wonderful motivation. What is that motivation? Not to be motivated by worldly desires. I am motivated. So what is that object of my motivation? I am converting my flow of life. Flow of life is each and every moment tied together. Each and every moment tied together. And each and every moment of my life, I worship the divine and I say, my life is an endless remembrance of you, dear Lord. Let my body, let my mind, let my intellect, let my life forces, let my ego convert themselves into an endless worshipfulness of the divine. Motivation is... I will not be motivated by worldly desires. I am habituated being motivated by worldly desires, by my likes and my desires, my dislikes, by my desires and avoidance of something which I don't want. That is also a desire. Acceptance and avoidance desire. I don't want that to happen. That is why I'm doing this. I want this to happen. That is why I'm doing this. This is an example. A water tank where you adjust the outlet and inlet in such a manner that slowly and slowly and slowly all the dirt and deposit and sedimentation acquired by ages together, which is known as samskara. All that will be washed out because of the inflow of what? Pure awareness of the presence of the divine in my life. O oh Lord, I live for Thee and Thee alone. I have no other motivation to live. I live to serve you, to be one with you, to be aware of your presence in my life, and I have no other motivation. That is the inlet, and I do my work. I'm doing it because of my past karmas, naivam papam avapsasi. You will not be tainted by new acquisition of samskaras, both papa and punya, vice and virtue. Sri Krishna says in the 39th shloka, I will teach you that. Listen to me carefully. Esha Shankhe Buddhi Esha Te Abhita Shankhe Buddhi Yoga Buddhi to Imam Shino Buddhir Yoga to Imam Shino Buddhya Yukta Jaya Partha He Arjuna being totally saturated with this idea 
कर्म बंधम प्रहसती नईव पापम अवापसती बोथ आर द सेम पापम न अवापसती यू विल नॉट एक्वायर एनी सिन और वर्च्यू वर्च्यू और वाइज कर्म बंधम प्रहसती द बॉन्डेज ऑफ अटैचमेंट विल वॉश डाउन द ड्रेन it happens to you and then he tells you na vikramana shasti the next shloka na vikramana shasti pratyavaya na vidyate swalpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat what does he say to cheer you up because we are all afraid of uncertain future we are all afraid of uncertain future i would like to know what my future is i feel very comfortable i am always apprehensive i have always on my toes on the brink as it were what future holds for me i don't know i don't know so he is assuring you Don't bother about the future, dear. Abhikrama nasha na asti. Na abhikrama nasha asti. Pratyabaya na vidyate. He refers to the Vedic way of karma kanda. Yaga jagya purushana brata upacharana and etc. 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 All the Vedic kriya karma. it is said that if you do not follow exactly precisely what has been mentioned even if it is involuntary done in an errors manner even if uncontrolled circumstances gets involved and get things wrong you will be the sufferer pratyavay the consequences of not performing correctly he says in this subject that i am going to teach you in the science of activity this procedure that methodology this technique that i am going to teach you pratyavay navidyate even if you make a mistake it is not so hurtful it is correctable swalpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat do it in a small little manner at a point of life during your flow of life and you will see what a strength you receive bhaya totally disappears from your mind by performing it in this manner and when i was studying this let me share with you these are the catch points of spiritual life my swami teacher i told him sir this is it doesn't get into my brains that how can little performance of karma yoga what is it whatever you do you do it as a worship of the divine trayate mahato bhayat it saves you from great 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 in depth apprehension and fear and as you know uncertainty has a fear for us he told me i was in calcutta at that day and the calcutta was going through a great famine the famous famine of calcutta of bengal 1944 45 a man made famine politically motivated that's different story but it was for me millions and millions of people died like cats and dogs of hunger and the calcutta streets and footpaths were littered by people dying of starvation and the only word that i 
could hear in Calcutta streets, Oh, I'm hungry, is anybody there to feed me? And on the street side, the British army in occupation were having dance and ball and banquets. Nobody had any ear to. And people were so poor, they did not have food to share. And if they did, it was nothing compared to the demand. Anyway, that was the state when it happened. My Swami who taught me Gita, I told him, Sir, I don't understand how this can totally remove my fear. Fear for future, fear of uncertainty, apprehension, concern, anxiety. What holds for me in fear? He was a wonderful Swami. I've seen so many, but somehow or other, maybe the first Swami I saw intimately, whatever it is, an excellent human being. He said, I will tell you to do something. Will you listen to me? Follow me verbatim. I said, yes, Maharaj, I'd like to experiment about it. He says, Trayate Mahato Bhayat, tell me, go down, take a morsel of food from the uh, kitchen, go to the roadside, wait, find out a real starving human being on the verge of starvation to death. Invite her. Worship her as a divine mother of the universe. Make her sit comfortably. Lay down the plate and serve her the food. And ask her to eat. And you stand beside her with folded hands. Or you sit kneeling down with folded hands and you always think, you are feeding the Divine Mother of the Universe and seek her blessings. I was game. Yes, I'll do that. I took a meal. We didn't have containers, plastic containers at that time. We had a, a leaf knitted into a plate, and it was strong enough. Rice with that in the sun. I didn't have to go far. Two, two steps away was a Wellington Square, uh, open garden. And really, a lady came, elderly, tattered clothes, no concept of bashfulness or shame. Half the body is naked. Skin and bones. You could, you have to take some time to think that he's a human being, not a skeleton. So I called her, Amma, please come. She couldn't believe her ears. She came. Amma, he has an asana. Please sit down. Be comfortable. He has a little water. Wash yourself. I was looking after her, caring for her, and then I put on the plate. She looked at me with such a surprise that she doesn't believe what is happening. That was her attitude. And as I was taught by the Swami, I really thought hard that my Holy Mother resides in this skeleton and I am serving the Holy Mother. And she ate with two hands. I said, I didn't say anything. I knew what she was going through. Everything. And what a beaming smile he looked at me 
and blessed me. And I was told to constantly think of the Holy Mother that this is a worship of the Holy Mother. And believe me, that feeling I am in cloud nine, I have nothing to bother, me and my mother. Swalpam api asya dharmacha trayate mahato bhayat. Swalpam api. What is that? It took five to ten minutes of my lifetime. That is swalpam, a small moment. And that small moment, what I did, that was a flow of my life. It was an attitudinal correction. I corrected my attitude. What is that? I thought, I kept on imagining the Holy Mother is in this skeleton. However horrible she may look, however frightful like a ghost, I sunk in cheekbones high, teeth showing up, oh dear me, worse than a witch in your imagination. And that lady with that food totally changed and blesses me. And I thought the Holy Mother is blessing me. Swalpam api dharmacha. I did my duty. Mahato bhayatrayate. Since that day, I never fail to appreciate what karma yoga can do for you. And this is how you live your life in God, with God, for the sake of serving God, and that too by the blessings of God. Nothing but God in your life. That is the essence of Karma Yoga. If you do so, your life is doing all the duties of life. Family duty, professional duty, social duty, national duty, duty as an enlightened human being to the human society, to the world. Perform it. Perform it as a karma yogi. This is converting your mundane life, your so-called worldly life, into an endless worship of the divine. This is the sense of Karma Yoga, and Swamiji, for a modern man, has put it in a modern language in his book known as A Saison Karma Yoga. Several lectures, and he poured his life blood out to convince the modern world you can remain in this world, continue to perform your duties of life. You need not be a sannyasi, you need not be a professional. But, Svargadharamapabritam, the doors of the heaven are open for you to meet your maker with your head held high. This is the 39th shloka, the watershed of Gita studies, that was philosophical, the concept of the soul, which is immutable, which is infinite, which is endless absolute, which is eternal. And this is how to live in this world, a procedure, a technique, a methodology, living with which you go across the ocean of life and death and make, meet your maker in heaven with your head held high. I washed away all my sins, sir, and I am at your feet. Because 
in this human life of mine, I have saturated myself with you and your thoughts and service to your children. What do you think of it, my dear friends? This is Karma Yoga for a modern man. And where did Swamiji find it? Not in his brains. He found it from the Upanishads, from the Gita. And that is why the Mundaka has explained that all this Shabdarachi, whether it's Upanishad Shabdarachi, the whole gamut of words, or the Gita Shabdarachi, the whole gamut of words of the Gita, all when they are knitted together, they emanate certain ideas. Absorb those ideas and absorb them in such a manner that your attitude towards life and living changes, demotivate yourself from worldly motivations, re-motivate yourself from spiritual motivations. And you have done it. You have played your game and you will unwind yourself. You will unburden yourselves of all the dirty, turgid contents of your personality. Let them flow out through performing your duties. Don't acquire new karmas. Acquire the awareness of oneness with the divine. Naiva papa mavapsashi salpa mapiasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. This is what he says. How it is to be performed? I don't want to go into the detailed study of the scriptures, but one or two catch shlokas will be enough to put you on to thinking. We have studied Shloka 45, 41. I would like to quote another Shloka which is very relevant. Please bear with me a while. Yeah. Shloka number 45. Traiguna Vishaya Veda Nistraiguna Bhava Arjuna Nirdandho Nitta Shattastho Nir Yoga Kshema Atmavan Bhava. What does he say? The Vedic literature, the Karmakanda part of it, which is full of ritualistic worship and all that, they are based on Trigunath Mika Maya. Either they are Sattvic or Rajasik or Tamasik in abundance. Swatva, Raja, Tama are not separables. The predominance calls it Svatvik, predominance of Rajas is called Rajasik, predominance of Tamas is called Tamasik. He says, all that Karmakanda dictates of the Vedas that you find Arjuna, they are Trigunatmika, they are in the domain of Maya. Maya is motivated by results of your own activity and as we are constituted now today, as we are constituted now, as of now today, our motivation is worldly gains and losses. He says, Nistrai Gunda Bhava Arjuna. Please, for the time, listen to me. Don't be motivated by worldly things in the domain of Maya. Though you are in the thumb of Maya as of now, but you have that willpower. 
you have the discretion what to do what not to do that is your ingenuity please don't do in return what do you do nirdwandho bhava nirjo nirjoga kshema bha nitya sant nitya sattasto bhava nirjoga kshema bhava nirdandha bhava don't be a victim of dual throng pleasure and pain where does the pleasure and pain come from fulfill of your desire is pleasure not full vent is pain get rid of that dwandha that dual throng nirdando bhava try to be not a victim a pursuer of pleasure and pain don't be a victim of your desires of this world nirdanda baba nitta sattastho baba what does it mean always try to remind yourself you are like a swan floating in water not a feather gets wet i will remain detached that does not mean i will not perform my duties thoroughly correctly efficiently perfectly excellently as an offering to god that i will not stop and i will do it because that is what my true origin and nature is i am poised in the majesty the excellence the sublimity of my soul but as because i am a living entity i convert my life into an endless worship of the divine nitta sattastha nirdandha nitta sattastha and nirjoga kshema आत्मवान या निर्योग क्षेमा देर आर टू वर्ड योग एंड क्षेमा योग इज अप्राप्त प्राप्त आकांक्षा दैट विच आई डू नॉट हैव अप्राप्त दैट विच आई डू नॉट हैव अ डिजायर टू हैव इट इज योग whether the world or god i do not have the awareness of god i would like to have it that is yoga and i do not have alfa romeo sports car i would like to have it that is worldly make sure don't get into yoga apraptasya prapti akanksha prapti ak प्राप्ति आकांक्षा आकांक्षा इज डिजायर और क्षेम प्राप्त रक्षण वंडरफुल यू कॉन्ट हैव इट एनी वेर एल्स इन द वर्ल्ड प्राप्त रक्षण सब हर अदर आई गेट अ ब्यूटिफुल थिंग एंड माई होल अटैचमेंट गोज देर एंड आई होल्ड ऑन टू इट i am prepared to pay my life to retain it that is seva praptasya rakshanam i like to preserve it i like to keep it my ownership must be there even if i have to give up my life i am prepared you can do the same thing with god so yoga seva as a total range from the world to the divine here he says thereby he says atmavan bhava be yoga and shemi be a yogi be a shemi but regarding the atman not the world nothing could be more explicit in life he says this is the technique known as karma yoga 
and how Sri Krishna says, Ishara Arpana Buddhya. This is Sri Krishna says, and Acharya Shankara makes a commentary on it. Listen to what Acharya says. Ishara Arpana Buddhya. Buddhi means attitude, conviction. I am transforming life, my life not into mundane pursuit of work, but I have converted concept of my work into an endless worship, reverential, respectful, emotional interaction with the awareness of presence of the divine in my life. Although it is long, but it is precise. This is how I live my life. Ishwara Arpana Buddhya. This is the buddhi. This is the attitude. This is the conviction. The attitude comes out of this conviction. Kriyamane Karmani. Continue perform the duties of life. Whatever you think is your duty. Continue. Shatta Shuddhija Jnana Praptir Yogyata Bhavati. In this process, what happens is you are not acquiring any dirt anymore and your tank is being exhausted and the tank is being filled up by pure water, awareness of presence of the Divine. I'm filling myself with awareness of presence of the divine and I'm throwing out all the worldly desires from me automatically because that is pushing it out. Gravitation and the load both together. The load of the water coming in fresh crystal clear water, that load and gravitation is pushing it out. So, Satya Suddha Gana Praptir Yogyata Bhavati. You are making yourself worthy of developing that vritti, that thought process, that modulation of your mind. What is that modulation of your mind? I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi. I have now washed myself totally clean of all the attachments that have been filling my personality up. My personality is absolutely clean and pure and it is ready to be filled up by one of God. And at that moment, you remember your teacher of says, Tattvamasi, the first breath is, I am Atma Brahma. The second is Aham Brahmasmi. There is no second. It turns I am Atma. Immediately Atma converts into Brahman. And you have done it. <coughs> so, dear, remember this comment to Acharya Shankara. Ishwara Arpana Buddhya Kriyamani Karmani Satya Shuddhija Jnana Praptir Yogyata Bhavati. You become, you make yourself worthy enough for that. Now, before I close, otherwise it will take me a long time, the next class. Allow me a few minutes. Acharya Shankara says, if you do so, this is what will happen to you. And that qualifies you to reach that goal. He grades it. Whereas Swami Vivekananda says, Swamiji says, Jnana, Karma, Bhakti, Yoga, any one of them or all of them, they are a direct and independent means to realization. Whereas Shankara says, Karma Yoga is a stepping stone. How did Swamiji deviate 
from avatara he is a disciple of avatara he says all avataras are the same and all avataras are eminent here and now he goes against the teaching of shankara he doesn't go against the teaching we are in a position not to understand what happens at that time as soon as satya shuddhi ja bhavati as soon as your personality is totally clean i'll make it clear through an example your mirror is covered with dirt and it has lost its reflectivity you buy some cleaning agent and some mopping yeah mopping muslin and you keep on slowly and carefully you keep on cleaning the mirror the reflectivity reflectivity of the mirror doesn't come off all of a sudden you slowly and slowly little reflectivity there and that reflectivity increases and all of a sudden it is absolutely bright and clear the reflectivity is come down the reflectivity is not being created the reflectivity is there you are mopping up the dirt the layer and the thickness of the dirt is being moved out and reflectivity is automatically asserting itself so at the final stages of karma yoga what happens shankara for our clear understanding shankara says gana praptir yogyata bhavati you qualify yourself to be worthy of i am atma brahma aham brahmasmi this form of gana swami ji says what is this madness why you make all these steps and grades and graduations tell me what actually happens and he says you are mopping the dirty mirror slowly and slowly the awareness of the presence of the divine in you and in the whole cosmos is slowly and slowly becoming aware in your understanding and one fine morning you are so clear you say i am atma brahm there's no gradation it is direct independent means to realization this is how we synthesize the teachings of an avatar and another avatar sangi so dear this chapter the second chapter up to shloka number 55 or shloka number 54 from 45 to 50 54 these 10 shlokas will teach you the secret of karma yoga which leads you to sthita pragya lakshana 55 to 72 let us stop here dears i hope you keep it in mind and hold on to these ideas so that we have no way out a sanyasi is a karma yogi is a gyan yogi is a bhakt jo bhakti yogi and also a raj yogi all combined together all the aspects of his personality rationality is for gyana yogi emotionality bhakti yoga ingenuity karma yoga self control and management of your personality raj yoga 
a sannyasi is an integrated human personality, a living God walking on this earth. That is what a Sita Pragya is. We'll read it next Sunday. Next Sunday. Thank you, dears. Thank you ever so much. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur